I think what we need to understand here is a certain threat that we can get through our email. Now here, for example, there's a proof of payment.rar, a RAR file or a compressed file, it's about one meg. It is from a alleged Mr. Samuel Mills, as you can see from the address here. However, what I have done is set up a setting that I can immediately look at the header of the file. So it was sent from return path to info at Saks here. It came from a IP address 192. As you can see, 192. 192 should be in. It's a, a private address. It was sent through my, uh, my mail server, external mail server. And from 127.0.0.1. So that is the address of the internal machine. Omail 106 here, we can use possibly later, that's a machine name for any forensics if it's needed. It says received from Infomix localhost, and also we can look at that company later. So a lot of things that we can document. Received originally from 41, 150, 62, 36, that also indicates uh, normally an ADSL uh, connection on the 41 range as far as I'm, I, I'm aware. Now, this is just to actually keep for yourself. It went through Clam AV and didn't find anything, which is very interesting. Another thing that we actually have to look at is how we can determine how that file, if it is a bad file or not. If we look at the file itself, I'm going to open it. We going to, it says it's a proof of payment EXE. Now, executable file, it's from a source I don't know, so definitely not execute that one. But to see if there's anything wrong with this file, what we can do, we can extract it to a directory or external file. And once we've extracted it, we can actually submit that to, we can submit that to a website called VirusTotal. Now VirusTotal is a site that looks at your file that you submit up to a maximum of 64 meg at the moment. And once we've actually submit that file, and now I'm going to select it. Now I have submitted it before, so we can actually determine if there's anything about that file. It's going to tell us that it has been scanned and I'll scan it again for your forces to actually have a look at it. So we're going to scan it. It's going to upload that specific file to the website. And once it's uploaded, it will analyze it to you, for you. Now, the way it's analyzing that file is submitting it to the current amount of up-to-date antivirus software that it has got in its backend. Now, the last one I see, it's 53 antivirus engines. Now, once this is completed, we can see here, once it's completed, it actually found that 15 out of the 53 antivirus engines picked up this it is a possible hostile or malware. Now this one I've, I've notified it as um, an obvious malware. AVG sees it as ransomer and as you can see at aware a couple of antivirus, Avast, Bitdefender, DLWeb, he said not. They all pick it up as possible problems. Now ransomer is a real problem for me because what this actually does it would take and connect, install it into the PC, and then it would encrypt all your hard drives and possibly map drives you could connect it to a machine. And once that is done, it will ask you for ransom. It will send you where you have to do a, a PayPal payment or any transfer payment so that they can send you the key to actually unencrypt your hard drive. It is a huge problem at the moment and you have to be aware that this is a problem so this is a process that you can quickly check do not open any files that you do not know uh, or don't expect from anybody even if it's executable and what we've had with this one the interesting thing for me is that this file the proof of payment.exe the icon that they use in this file is adobe acrobat and this is a problem because users that aren't really computer literate or aware of the threats will think that, the, that these actual the PDF 
file and actually double click on it to read it and that will actually then execute the system uh, execute on your system and encrypt your files one thing you can do in the enterprise environment make sure that the users cannot run any applications that shouldn't be able to um, if they have to do anything like this file will try to encrypt it will require administrative access make sure that the users don't have administrative access and if you are in an administrator make sure you don't execute your daily um, function in the organization in administrator mode but rather in a separate user id